Assalamu alaikum everyone this is Dr Hasna with Hasna's anatomy and today we're studying the anatomy of the urethra it is quite easy all you have to do is remember a little bit of parts of it and then we'll talk about a very important clinical over here and once you're done with that you nailed your urethra not yours but like mine no like the urethra itself okay cut that out right now this uh, is a board of my crash course if you want to purchase my crash course the link is down below in the description so guys firstly we need to know about the urethra is what is urethra it is the um, carrier of urine from the bladder outside uh, through the external urethral meatus so what happens is where does the urethra begin it begins from the neck of the bladder now where is the neck of the bladder let me just show you that the neck of the bladder basically your bladder is a pelvic cavity organ kept over here so this is the pelvis right over here all right makes sense i'm just giving you a little perspective before we begin uh just below the bladder there is this hamet like mus bladder and basically at the lower end of the pelvis there is this hamet like muscle uh, or a partition known as the levator ani what is the function of levator ani it does have many functions but most importantly it causes the pelvic cavity to end so where that levator ani muscle lies below that begins the next region known as the perineum so this over here is the perineum below the pelvic cavity i hope that makes sense so within the pelvic cavity we have the bladder coming from the bladder is the urethra and it has to pierce this uh, levator ani and go down inside the perineum and through the perineum out into urogenital triangle and it goes out so uh, what is the deep and superficial what does this mean i just want you to remember within the perineum there are more subdivisions because this is anatomy division karne ke bagair iska jaan nahi isko saans nahi aati so the division within the perineum is done by this membrane which is known as the perineal membrane what does the perineal membrane do it divides the entire perineum into a deep and a superficial perineal space you also call it pouches deep pouch superficial perineal pouch all right so via this membrane it is divided all right now let's talk since you have that in perspective we can talk about the urethra itself so what is happening here is when the urethra is leaving the bladder it is eventually leaving the pelvic cavity piercing the levator ani uh, before it can pierce it comes across this uh, gland in males called the prostate gland which obviously is going to be absent in the females within the females the uh, uh, urethra is going to be very small couple of centimeters and it uh, enters urogenital triangle and the external urethra meatus very quick but in males in contrast to that it is quite long it goes up to like 20 cm so a part of that urethra where which is running within the prostate gland is known as the prostatic urethra all right so the first part of the male urethra is known as the number 1 it is the prostatic urethra which is running within the prostate gland what is the feature of the prostatic urethra i just want to remember a little bit not too much just remember that within the uh, prostatic urethra there is a ridge ridge means any elevation which is longitudinally ridge so you can see this this is like a ridge because it's an elevation longitudinally uh, in the urethra you will find this ridge all right on either side of the ridge there is going to be obviously where there is going to be an elevation there are going to be two depression on either side of it so therefore there is going to be two depression these are known as the two prostatic sinuses on either side of the urethra uh, urethral crest which is the longitudinal ridge urethral this ridge is actually called the urethral crest so i forgot to mention that and finally the summit of this urethral crest or the longitudinal ridge is known as the prostatic utricle and within the prostatic utricle uh, the prostate gives its secretions via two ducts called the ejaculatory ducts i hope that makes sense so within that utricle two openings of the prostate gland uh, happen and you know whatever is going to go in there is going to be basically obviously the seminal fluid which is going to enter your uh, same passage as the urinary passage all right that makes sense so uh, this is the prostatic part of the urethra let's talk about the second part the second part is going to be lying within the perineal membrane what was the perineal membrane again uh, refresh your brain a little the perineal membrane was what was dividing your entire perineum into a superficial and a deep pouch right so while the urethra is traversing the perineal membrane it is known as the membranous urethra so this is membranous urethra makes sense and finally we have the longest part of this male urethra this is going to be constituting most of the centimeters of the urethra it's going to be known as the penile urethra okay the terminal part of the penis is known as the glands this over here is the glands right within the glands 
the urethra dilates when it dilates this part of the urethra is known as the navicular fossa also known as fossa terminalis why because it's the terminal part of the urethra so terminal part of the penile urethra or spongy urethra is known as navicular fossa right before it leaves via the external urethral meatus okay that makes sense so overall you can see this is the third part this is the penile urethra also known as spongy urethra obviously because it's going to traverse the corpus spongiosum as well which is a erectile tissue of the uh, male uh, reproductive organ all right so now we know the parts of the urethra uh, just remember one thing that the most dilatable portion of the urethra is going to be over here all right the most dilatable portion of the urethra is the prostatic urethra and the least dilatable part will obviously be uh, where it's congested and you know like it has like too much surrounding it in within the perineal membrane therefore the membrane of urethra is least dilatable portion i hope that makes sense now that we know a lot about the urethra let's talk about a very important clinical known as the extravasation of urine now guys i want you to get a little perspective of this diagram over here this is that perineal membrane and this is that membranous urethra going into the penile urethra this is the scrotum this is the penis and this is the anterior abdominal wall and above you see over here this is the pelvis makes sense if that's into perspective now you'll understand extravasation of urine very well where you will try a lot in many videos won't work but over here it's going to work because uh, this concept is only uh, you can understand it only if you see this image over here all right so guys remember one thing i'm going to tell you this so here you can see guys this is the deep perineal pouch this entirely is a superficial perineal pouch this is that part of the pelvis below the pelvis lies your perineum this is entire perineum and then anterior abdominal now i or we've talked about these two fascias in the anterior abdominal wall there were superficial fascia was divided into a superficial fatty layer and a deep membranous layer so those layers we're going to talk about once again you can see that this is the superficial fatty layer anterior abdominal wall it goes and it is uh, it going down all the way to the uh, external reproductive organ and the perineum uh, area of the skin then uh, the, we have the deep membranous layer of the superficial fascia now the deep membranous layer, it says that i want to be unique i don't want to be just someone just just crossing everywhere no i'm going to be attached i'm going to get get attached to someone so that i can get my heart broken all right so the membranous layer it goes down okay it's continuous below and all the way to the scrotum it goes and gets attached posteriorly to the perineal membrane so the part of the perineal membrane posterior part of the perineal membrane it gets attached to that part makes sense all right and you can see above it is continuous this entire superficial perineal pouch you can see is continuous with the anterior abdominal wall deep to the deep membranous layer makes sense all right so what happens is whenever there's going to be an injury in the penile part of the urethra let's suppose over here you are going to be asked this viva question is when there is injury to the penile urethra where will there be the extravasation of urine the first phase is going to go is into the entire uh, male reproductive organ and into the, the scrotum i hope that makes sense obviously it's going to occupy the entire superficial perineal pouch but will it occupy the deep perineal pouch no why is it not going to occupy the deep perineal pouch because it has no way to go above the perineal membrane so it cannot go above because of the perineal membrane perineal membrane over here is limiting the urine from going above into the pelvis all right and the urine cannot go posteriorly because over here is over here is the anal region it cannot go to the anal region why because it's posteriorly limited by what it is limited by this important attachment of the deep membranous layer to the perineal membrane all right and finally it cannot go laterally as well laterally it can't go because there is going to be attachment with the ischio pubic rami so uh, if i show you the urogenital region real quick this is your entire perineum all right the anterior part of the perineum is triangular it is known as the urogenital triangle this is the anal region this is the urogenital triangle the urogenital triangle laterally is very firmly adherent with the conjoint ischio pubic rami of the pelvis bone and this is your perineal membrane completely and posterior border perineal membrane is in contact with the deep membranous layer so the urine will stay in this area and go nowhere so laterally it is limited by the conjoint ischio pubic rami and finally another place that uh, the urine can flow if you notice in this diagram is that it can enter the anterior abdominal wall so there are two places going to actually go is superficial perineal pouch and anterior abdominal wall because of the attachment of the deep membranous layer of the superficial fascia which allows that continuity to occur so 
uh, if they ask you where can the urine go you'll say anterior abdominal wall it can go into superficial perineal wall where can it not go it cannot go above into pelvis by the perineal membrane it cannot go laterally by the uh, ischiopubic rami and it cannot go posteriorly because of the attachment of the deep membranous layer to the perineal membrane it cannot go posteriorly so the urine is restricted from going other places it stays where it has to uh, that's why god made all these layers so um, the only thing i want you to remember is that holden line as well uh, the deep membranous layer also comes in uh, attachment to the deep fascia uh, where there is the holden line so that the urine cannot even go into your thighs that's also like an extra point if you want to top you can even mention that but that is all that you need to remember for extravasation of urine and urethra guys that was all you need to know really hope you understood see in the next video where we will talk about i don't know what let's see what happens in the next video stay tuned